also I do have an announcement to make. Uh, please be praying for Debbie. Uh, her uh, cancer doctor wants her to go have a what is it, MRI uh, on her head just to be on the safe side, so let's get that done. Uh, Chuck Campbell has hurt his knee. Uh, one that fills in a lot for me, and uh, we need to be praying for him. I, I can't remember what it is that he's hurt. I can't pronounce it, but uh, nevertheless, uh, he, he may be having facing surgery. We have uh, my mother uh, has got uh, stage uh, four uh, kidney failure, and I took her today for some uh, tests, and and uh, I don't know what I was. We ain't heard nothing back from that, and uh, we this has been having a lot of stuff in my family personally. Uh, people see it and things, and said be praying about that. And and my church fa our church family, we need to be lifting them up, and 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 all the uh, things that's going on in our country. And I think right now we just need to come down and have all the prayer. Yes, ma'am. Remember Miss Linda Cam Campbell. She just feeling wiped out from her surgery and all the stuff she went through also. And, and uh, just keep lifting one another up. And uh, we'll just keep on serving the Lord. How about that? And uh, uh, pray for Anne Marie also her back and things of that nature. Any other special requests that I can repeat? Yes, ma'am. Jean King, remember her. She's in the hospital, blood poisoning, right? Okay, all righty. And, and tonight we take up for the prison ministry. Uh, Mark has already put us a, a bucket out there. And Braxton, would you care to uh, uh, get a, a, a offering plate or something back there to take up for the uh, prayer requests? Or what, or what, well, I think the papers are back there, are they not? The papers are back there. Well, if, if you... Uh, if you wouldn't care, how about handing them out right quick, please? Just if anybody needs one, you raise your hand. When Braxton gets back in, he'll give you a prayer request, and and uh, you fill it out and, and drop it in the plate back there whenever you leave. And uh, tonight's the prison ministry. We need to give to that. And uh, I done put some in the bucket, so you put some in the bucket. And I, I promise you it's to lead people to Christ, and, and we don't need to leave nobody out, that's for sure. We need to preach to them. But... Uh, uh, He'll be right in here in just one moment. He's working on it. Uh, anybody else, uh, anything on your heart you'd like to praise the Lord about? I'd like to praise the Lord that I made it through Monday. I didn't think I was. I was go I'd have called 911 if I could have got out of the floor to get my telephone. I hollered for Uncle Coleman, but he didn't hear me. But uh, I got sick on my stove. I've never been that sick. Raise your hand if you need a prayer request. He'll hand it to you right now. Anybody? Anybody need a prayer request to fill out? Anybody? Nobody? Okie dokie. Well, they'll be back there. If you need them, you fill it out, put in that, and she'll get it on the prayer. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's good thing. Yeah. They're bringing them around. They're bringing them around. They may already be on the prayer list, Brother Brack. Yeah, I appreciate your time. Thank you for getting that. But, uh, it's, it's not, yeah, I, I was terribly sick Monday, but God saw me through. I, I, I've never been that sad. So sore now. I can't hardly move. Ron told me to stay away from him. But if y'all will, <coughs> all disabled, let's come down and uh, remember Gabriel. We need to remember him. And uh, let's just lift up all our young people. Raise our hand. Let, any special requests you have, let's, let's, let's pray about that. If you're able to come, you come on. If you're not, you, you just stay there in your pew. God will hear you there. This is good. But some folks likes to come down and just bit gather around the altar and and uh, some's not able, and that's just fine too. Amen. God knows where your heart is, and, and He loves you. But that's remember young married couples. And, and Brother Chad, we're glad you feel like being here, brother. We love you, man. You get better. Yep. Anything we can do, we'll do it. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Remember my family and your prayers too. Remember, remember Vicky's family and Keisha. I remember all of them, okay? Everybody good? Well, let's humble our hearts to the Lord. Father. <coughs> I come to you again in this house called out for your name's sake. And Father, I ask you to please hide me behind the cross tonight that you'll be high and lifted up. And Father, I want to thank you for never leaving us nor forsaking us. Father, I ask for that conviction upon my heart of sin and that I can confess it to you and turn from it. Thank you for these sweet people taking the time to come out here tonight to pray and to serve you and to listen to a message out of the Word of God. Father, help us to hide it in our heart and deliver it out into a lost and dying world to remember it. And Father, I'm praying, believing that will come to pass.
Father, I pray for our government. I pray for our president, vice president, all the people in the House, Congress, Senate. I lift them up to you, God. I ask you to touch them, change their hearts. Father God, I pray for the world. I lift that up to you, God, and I ask you to deal with their hearts. And I pray for our missionaries that's out on the field. And Lord, I ask you to just give them that special anointing. And Father, as we go out into this, this town and out into the different counties out and about, Lord, help us to walk the walk and talk the talk. Father, those that's backward and, and backslidden, Lord, help us to be a restorer as we spoke about that Sunday morning. Help us to reach out to them, considering ourselves, that at least we don't be tempted. And Lord, help us to stay focused that we're of like manner. And Father, help us to always remember there's absolutely no way that I can save myself or anybody here can save their self. There's no works that can be done by their hands that would save anybody. You had to do it. And Father God, I want to thank you for your son Jesus that came and paid the ultimate price so we could have power through his death and his resurrection. And I thank you for that. Father, I do pray for my family as a whole. I lift up my wife and all the things that we're going through. We pray for Gabriel. We pray for all the young people, Lord, all the temptations that comes their way. But we need to remember there's no temptation that's not common unto man. But God is faithful, and he will deliver us, and he will bring us out. But we have to let him. So, Lord, help us to let him. And, Father, thank you that Chad's feeling better and feeling like pushing them keys. And, Lord, just hide him behind the cross. Help him with his endeavors also, Lord. And I know you will. Father, just bless as only you can. Bless them, them uh, folks in prison out there, out there in jail. And, Lord, help us to encourage them with Bibles, God promised book, maybe a good sweet cake or a drink. And, but the main thing is to tell them about the Lord and how he can deliver them, even if they're in bondage here in this life. But he can deliver them and give them eternal life through Christ Jesus. And, Lord, I'm praying, believing that will come to pass. I want to thank you again for the faithful that do strive to serve you and honor you and worship you in spirit and in truth. And Father, I ask all these things in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'd like to say again, thank you for loving us. Thank you for your kindness and your mercy. And we ask it all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And the church said, Amen. Praise the Lord. I love you, sweet people. Let's keep on praying. Keep on getting it. Let's see, everyone grab a handbook and turn to page 235. 235, standing together.
Him with everything. If you have your Bible with you tonight, turn to Colossians uh, chapter number two. It'll be very much in prayer for me uh, on this. I, I, I've been studying on it quite quite some time, and, and uh, I, I hope I, I got all kinds of notes and and things I've looked up and and to define everything. And, and uh, uh, I just want you to know that. Uh, I just want to do my best to preach the Word of God, and, and if I use my notes, fine. If I don't, fine. I, I've got it pinned down. If you ever need to see them or anything of that nature, I, I'm glad to give you a copy. I, I promise you that, because uh, everything I try to do, I try to back it up and look it up uh, to where I can give you the facts, yes, but also during the preaching time, I try to preach it and, and present it in a way that a child could understand it, I pray. Because, listen, it's not rocket science. We realize that we are lost sinners and we need a Savior. And I want you to understand something. The secret's out in the New Testament. The Savior's name is Jesus Christ. And He's God's only begotten Son. That should never get old to a believer. And it should be very new to someone who's lost and undone and needs that encouragement. Because, listen, unless you have the Son, you'll never have heaven. Unless you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you'll never have heaven. I'd like to share this with you, if, if I may. It's a real burden upon my heart. I, I have led uh, many of, a, of children to the Lord while they was young. And, and, I, and I, I, Raymond, do you believe they got saved? Yes, if they believed in the only begotten Son of Jesus and realized they was a sinner, they got saved. But I want you to understand something. A lot of them don't never get the opportunity to learn. They don't never get the opportunity to learn why we have a, a business meeting. Why do we attend a fellowship of church? Why, why is it so important to come and listen to the Word of God to be read and all these things? Well, Brother Raymond, why, why don't they learn? I can't make the children come or make them away. The parents have to bring them. And the saddest thing to me anymore is even the grandparents are living in sin more and more and more. I know I've shared this before, but uh, I had a papa and he, he just loved the Lord. And, and uh, I, I, I seen a man one day, I was out there at Food Line, and now don't, don't take me out of context, I'm just talking to you. Uh, he come out of there and he looked just like my papa. But you know what? He wasn't my papa. Why? 
he had a he had a, a, a twelve pack of beer under this arm. Raymond, what's wrong with that? He's a Paul Paul. He still ain't grown up. Raymond, that's awful. I can't believe you said that. I'm just being honest. You know, kids should look up to Paul Paul. I mean, they should. Until they learn who Jesus is, who really walked on water, they ought to think Papa could walk on water because he loves them no matter what they do and no matter what. And he tells them about a God in heaven that loved them and told them about Jesus. And he practices it in his life. You know what? If people's not practicing, you're going to get generation after generation that don't believe. And you're going to get people that the Holy Spirit moves on when they're young. And they get saved. But they never get explained what happened to them. Will they be in heaven? Of course they will. Because they got saved. That's what I'm preaching on tonight. You can't add nothing to salvation. It's not a works of your hands or my hands. But I think the churches, a lot of churches, have got so caught up in their traditions and what they can do that the power of God's just not there. I mean, we ought to rejoice when we see somebody get saved. I mean, it ought, to be, it ought to be something else when we hear that somebody has called on the Lord as their Savior and they've been saved. Why? Because there's a real devil a-working and there's a real flesh a-working. And, and, and unless they're done like the Bible says they ought to be done, they'll grow up, for lack of words, illiterate when it comes to the Word of God and what we do as a local church. And I'll tell you what, as long as i got a breath of air... I'm going to try my best at whoever's here, whosoever, to drive home what the local church is supposed to be about. What's it supposed to be about, Raymond? Right? Their husband, Jesus Christ. He's to be high and lifted up. He's to have preeminence in their life. Why? False doctrine will creep in. It'll mess with people's minds. It'll, there'll be more important ceremonies than, than, than instead of a meeting with Almighty God. We have an opportunity of a lifetime right now to be able to come together and to tell people about the Lord and to learn about the Lord and to take it back to our family and our neighbors and everybody that we see to let them know they is an answer to what's going on in this world. And His name is Jesus Christ. And we got to believe it. we got to understand. Well, the, the, tonight, if you turn to chapter number 2, we'll be looking at verses 11 and 12. Verses 11 and 12, and, and the title of the message is Jesus versus false religion. Jesus versus false religion. Now, Jesus has won. Amen. He's won the victory. A, a born again believer works out of victory. We don't work for victory, we got victory. Amen. I get to go to heaven because Jesus defeated that false religion, and anything else is false. He's the only truth that's ever been. He is the truth. But, way of introduction. Some of the Colossian church were stressing the ritual of circumcision. They were saying a man had to be circumcised to be saved, that God would not accept him unless he was circumcised. Giving his heart and life to Jesus was not enough. This is false. Nothing is to be added or taken away from Jesus. You must be born again. And that's what Paul stands on. I know over in 1 Corinthians chapter number 12 he said he'd rather say, say five words that everybody understands instead of 10,000 that nobody understands. I believe I know what them words is. You must be born again. Amen. I believe that's the five words that he said that everybody should understand. But if you found your place and you're able for the reading of God's word, would you please stand if you're only, if you're able. And the Bible reads like this in, in Colossians chapter number uh, 2, verse number 11. In whom also ye are circumcised with a circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him, in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who has raised him 
from the dead. Let us pray. Father, I thank you so much for the reading of your word. I ask you again in my prayer to convict my heart and hide me behind the cross. Help me to remember everything that I've studied and researched and looked into. Help me to be able to read my notes if they need to be read. But Father, help me just to preach it however you'd have me to do. I'll give you this flesh right now, this body, to use as you'd see fit. Father, I pray for them that watch us on Facebook, on YouTube. I pray for them in the parking lot. I pray for them this year. I pray for them that's on vacation or anything of that nature. And I pray for them that just has absolutely no desire to serve you, Lord. I lift that up to you, God. Ask you to deal with their hearts because you're able and you're capable. You did mine, and I thank you that you did. And I thank you that you give me a space of time to be getting ready. And, Lord, I know that I'm not ready yet. I keep a working on me, but the past 20 some years, I tell you, I thank you for your conviction, I thank you for your love, I thank you for your grace, I thank you for your mercy, all the trials, all the hatefulness I've dealt with with people, and all my hatefulness, you've let me put under the blood, and Father, please help me to preach it straight, and to, out of love, and compassion, and, and make people think about their life, and how they're living, and Father, only you can do that through a nut like me, so I ask it all in Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. You may be seated. But as we said in the introduction, these uh, Colossian people, they were uh, uh, wanting to uh, go back to circumcision and things of that nature. And I want you to know there's a lot of people that like to have their cer ceremony. They like to have their preeminence in a local church just like they do at Cedar Rock Country Club or uh, any type of club. They like their presidents and their, and their uh, people that's over something and things of that nature. May I submit to you, you cannot rewrite Matthew chapter number. 20, 25 through 28, whenever the King of glory, Jesus Christ himself, said that he came to serve and not to be served. In other words, if you're going to be great in this life, you will be learning how to be a servant. But nevertheless, Paul is real strict and real uh, on this uh, false religion, if you will. And I'll probably have to explain a little bit of it as we go. In verse number 11a, the Bible reads like this, in whom... Also ye are circumcised with the circumcision uh, made without hands. Made without hands. I want you to think about this for just a minute. False religion. Let's get it under control here first. The, the, this stress is ritual out, outward, uh, uh, outward form. In other words, to be seen. A ritual to be seen. And, and, and think about this. Uh, circumcision was the ritual of, of faith uh, to the Jews. It symbolized two things. Now, I would like to share these two things with you, if I may. Number one, it, it symbolizes the faith of a man and his family in God. When a man trusted God, he was circumcised as, as a sign or testimony of the faith of God in, in God. This uh, declared to the world that he and his family, notice his family, were going to follow God. Now we know that the Jew, uh, the boy Jews, was circumcised on the eighth day after birth. Now, as I studied this and as I thought about this, Paul was talking about the church, the Gentiles, and all of us, the Jews, and all. Now, now in the, in the Old Testament, a, a Gentile could be part of the family of God. How? They had to be circumcised. They had to show that that they had that badge, if you will, that they believed. But my dear friends, it was a heart change. They had to change from where they was at. And that's why they did it. That's why Moses made the statement, I'd rather you circumcise the fat around your heart than to be so stiff-necked. I tell you, it's, it's, it's just crazy sometimes how people are. But the, the number two, it also symbolized the cutting away of the body of sins that were in the flesh. When the, the foreskin was cut off and removed, it was a picture of sin, the whole body or package, if you will, of sin being cut off and removed from man. This is what God intended until Christ came. This was what God intended until Christ came. Now keep this in mind. But man corrupted God's purpose. Man, man began to say man was accepted to, 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 to go God not because he trusted God, but because he was circumcised. Now man says you can't be saved unless he, you join a church. 
was confirmed, was baptized, or kept the law. Now, that's, that's how a lot of good uh, Baptists are. Unless you uh, do this or you do that. Now, uh, Brother Raymond, are you saying we don't need to be a part of a church? Are you saying we don't need none of these things? I'm a saying they ain't nothing that you can do. They ain't nothing that I can do. They ain't nothing that nobody can do to save you. Nothing. God had to do something. We're wretched at our best. God give us all those laws or give the Jews all those laws to keep and to crucify these, these animals, not crucify, but kill these animals and have that blood. Why? Because you had to have a blood sacrifice to show us how bad sin smelt. How bad that fat smells burning and, and all this stuff, all this blood and all this death to show us that in order for us to be saved, something has to die. And I want you to understand something. The, uh, the blood of goats and, and animals can't, can't save us. It was just a picture of things to come. All those years, Raymond, yes, all those years. It takes a while out of salvation if you come to church and you listen to the Word of God before you ever start applying it to your life, does it not? You have to hear it over and over and over and over. Why? Because you are a sinner on your best day. But if you have called on Jesus Christ for your Savior and believed it and trusted Him, I want you to know something. You've been circumcised into Christ. Now think about this for just one minute as we go back. I want, I want to share this with you if I may. In Romans 10, 2-4, the Bible's the best commentary. For I bear them record, this is Paul talking to them, that they have a zeal of God, but not according to the knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Notice the word believeth. This law up here, these Ten Commandments, they are there to show us that man cannot keep them all. And if you cannot keep them all, you can't go to heaven. But God had a plan. He sent his righteousness to a cross to die for us while we was yet sinners. That precious blood of Jesus was shed on that cross. In other words, that cut it off. That cut off our sin. It went down into our heart. And it got to all that sin that we did in the past. All the sin we're going to do in the future. And I mean, it clipped it all. It washed us. It cleaned us. It made us whiter than snow. Whether well, you even want to believe it or not. If you believe that Jesus died and rose again victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And you called on his name. You are saved, my friend. There is nothing, nothing. Just like you can't change if a man's been circumcised. You can't go back. I want you to understand something. You've been saved. He's cut that sin off. He's made you free. He's made you where you can be something for God. But you've got to believe it and you've got to trust and you've got to learn about him and, and you've got to apply it to your life. But that's after the salvation. Think about these things as we go on. But now in verse 11b in verse number 12 that we talk about the falseness. This was false. And after Christ. May I submit to you, Paul's talking after God's anointing, Christ, if you will, has died on that cross. After the bloodshed. It don't matter how many tattoos you've got, how many times you've been pierced. It don't matter if you've been covered from the top of your head to your toe and made made uh, uh, like like a lizard. I seen that one night on TV. A man spent all this had his teeth sharpened. That man can call on Jesus and be saved, and none of that'll be in heaven. Amen. That's why God will give you a gift if you'll really get serious about what He did for you and how lost you was. If you'll really get serious. You won't even be able to tell what somebody wore last week. Raymond, you're crazy. Yep, I'm crazy. I, people tell me what some people had on, and I don't even know what they had on. I don't. Why, Brother Raymond? God's given me the greatest gift I could ever have. I just see the soul. I'm serious. It would have to be absolutely like a rattlesnake wrapped around their neck for me to pay any attention. Why? I'm not here for that. I'm not out there for that. 
I, I, I ain't out there to hear their tones of their voice. I ain't out there to see what they got on. I ain't out there to see what they're doing. I'm out there to win the lost. Period. No strings attached. Why? That's what Jesus did. That's what he did. This is the circumcision without hands. God did it. Man had nothing to do with it. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. But, but think with me. True religion now, verse 11b and tw verse number 12, stresses Christ and the spiritual. Christ and the spiritual. Not the outward. Not the ceremonies. Not the rituals. You could care less if they're having a dinner next Sunday or they're not. Amen. I don't have to be enticed or begged or, or it, it chase it to be where God's word's being preached. I don't have to be there for to go to Sunday school. I'm going to be there. Why, Brother Raven? Because I want to learn more about my Savior. I want to, whenever I go, well done, my good and faithful servant, come on in and enjoy the joys of heaven and have it with a clear conscience. Amen. But let's go on. Let's go on. Let's look at the truth. Uh, we, we look at, at 11b first. Uh, cutting away sins. Let's think about this for just a minute, minute if you will. Look with me. It says, uh, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Now, think with me on this. I'm cutting away sins. No man can do this, only Jesus Christ. How does he do it? Think about it. By death. Wait a minute, I... I thought you had eternal life. I do. But I couldn't unless he died. A reality of death, the cross. There was witnesses there that did not believe. And they saw him dead. They saw a dead body come down off that cross. Beaten. Pierced. Bruised. Almost beyond recognition. Off that cross. Why, Brother Raymond? For you and for me and for whosoever. Whosoever did believe that he died on that cross. That's why he died. Circumcised it says without hands. And, and we see here putting the body of sins to rest through that all. And, 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 and we think about this, Romans 6, 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. The body of sin. That flesh. Brother Raymond, you're still here. But I ain't here like I used to be. Something else has come inside. I've got the biggest stint that's ever been. Amen. It lets his blood flow through my heart. Amen. Hallelujah. He changed me. How? Because out of the abundance of, of my heart, my mouth to speak. And I'm to speak the articles of God in correction, yes, but in rescue also. Keep that in mind. Uh, and it says that henceforth we should not serve sin. Henceforth, Romans 16, we should not yet serve sin. Brother Lemon, why did Paul put in, in Romans chapter number 7, whenever I want to do good, I do bad? Because Paul was still here. I'm still here. But may I submit to you the death of reality of Jesus Christ dying for my sin and me accepting that as he did it for me, keeps me. No matter how I am, God loves me. No matter how you have been, no matter how you are, God still loves you, and Jesus' blood still counts. And when the Father looks down, he sees the death of his Son on your account. On your account. He bought you whenever you didn't deserve to be bought. He, he paid for you whenever you did not deserve it. And, 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 and he took care of it. So how did God do it? Jesus died. Jesus died. Reality of death. Dead body. Put in a tomb. Two-ton rock rolled across in front of it. The rock did not have to be moved for Jesus to come out. Why? Because he has a new body now. He's the first to die. Amen. And I want you to understand something because he's risen I and be. We'll get into that just a little bit more here as, as we look, look along on, 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 as we go. 12a, a burial in baptism and a resurrection to a new life. 12a, look with me now. Buried with him 
in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him. Now, now Raymond, I can't take that way. You've got to think spiritually. You can't think fleshly no more. You've got to think spiritually. This is what happened if you've been saved. You, you see, when, when a person believes in his heart, God counts you as being buried with Christ in the baptism of his death. In other words, when you receive him, you are being identified with the baptism of his death. Just like Moses in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 was identified with, with uh, 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 the children of Israel and God through crossing the Red Sea whenever it parted. He was identified with the whole family of God. He is identified with God. How? By believing. Abraham believed and it was counted to him for righteousness. What is the righteousness of God? It is Christ Jesus. He is the perfect, the ultimate man, 100%. He is the perfect and, and, and 100% God incarnate. And he died for his creation that it might be saved. I say hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We get in for that. You know what? If we would do our time meditating on what it took to save us, and we do a little bit of research in the Bible, how Paul speaks, and how he talks to everybody, and we'd be clear on what we believe, there'd be more people saved. Why? Anybody can be negative. It comes natural, don't it? It's a whole lot easier to talk about bad stuff, is it not? Yeah, it is. I mean, it's coming in by boatloads now. But we're putting this out by boatloads too. People don't want to hear this. Why? Because it's just like this. I don't like that bunch of drug dealers. I don't like what they do. But I love it when they get saved. I don't want to deal with no homosexual. I don't even want to say hey. Then you're wrong. Why, Brother Raymond? What do they need? Talk to them about Jesus and love them. Tell them about the Lord. If they reject Jesus, they'll go to hell just like you would or are if you don't know Christ. Don't talk like lost people. Lost people want them to die and go to hell. They tell people to go to hell every day. If they don't tell it with their mouth, they tell it with their actions because they sure ain't telling them how they can be saved. They ain't living their life in such a way anybody want to live that way to win souls. Therefore, they're just telling them to go on to hell. Why do you care about these children and stuff like that? That's the next generation. If they don't get saved, <coughs> they'll die and go to hell. I don't care how cute and cuddly they are. They'll die and go to hell. They need to be saved. And, and the only way they're going to get it is God's plan. Because I can't do it. My hands can't do it. His, his can. He did it. He finished it. He took care of it. He took care of all that, buried with Christ, and, and baptized in his death. That's why whenever we're baptized by this water, the outward showing to identify ourselves with Christ, the death, the burial, and the resurrection, I'm identified with Jesus every time. Every time somebody does that. But can they identify with him out in public? They can't if they're not practicing. Why? They don't know what they're practicing unless they're taught. You must be taught. You must see it. And think about this. God counts a person as having been raised with Christ when he arose. When God the Father looks down and, and you get saved and you've asked Jesus Christ, he sees you at the dead. He sees you accepting what he did for you through his son's blood streaming down from that cross and running down that hill. He sees you accept that for you personally. Three days later, when King Jesus shows up on the scene alive, he sees you alive for the joy that was set before him. He endured the cross. That's us. That's the church. The joy that was set before him. Just like a loving father when a son or daughter does something good. Hallelujah. The only good thing we can do is call on Jesus for salvation and then learn of him and be faithful to him regardless the consequences it costs us in this life. Because it costs you death. He sees you dead in Christ. But he sees you alive in Christ. Keep his 
gentlemen, no person can ever escape death unless they truly trust the death of Christ to stand for their death. You, you, can't, you can't defeat death, man, unless you understand who he is. His name is Jesus. There's a, there's a great uh, uh, CD out that I, I can't remember it, but it talks about how all those demons and things was in there, and Satan says, uh, uh, is he still down? He's still down. Second, uh, is he down? He's down. He's still down. He's in that tomb. He ain't coming out of here. Death's got him. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He's moving. Hold him down. We can't hold this. We can't hold this down. He descended down into hell, and he set the captives free. My dear brothers and sisters, and out of there he arose, and I want you to know some of the Old Testament saints walked through Jerusalem, and I, I bet they said, good morning, good morning. We're going with the master. Amen. He arose victorious over death, hell, and the grave. You're sitting here listening to me right now, and you're saved. It's because God did it, and you accepted it, and you were in that resurrection. Quit flopping around and acting like a dead chicken or a rotten fish. Get up from there. Do what you're supposed to do. Love on Jesus. Love them people to Christ. They act hateful and act weird. That's between them and Almighty God. Ain't none of your business other than to say not to act that way if this book teaches again. Nah, let God take care of it. And they, they cannot live eternally unless they trust the resurrection of Christ to stand. over death, hell, and the grave. Over 500 people see him. But I'll tell you this right now. When I got saved and realized what happened to me, I know it's in the Bible, but I didn't need it. I believe it. Amen. I believe it. I don't have to have 500 witnesses tell me he rose. I know he rose. I can't be like I am without the Spirit of God in my heart. And I can't have the Spirit of God in my heart without I know he died. And I can't have the Spirit of God in my life, but I know He arose. I believe it. He even said Himself, Blessed is them that hadn't seen me. I ain't seen Him, but boy, I've seen the Spirit move. Amen. You know, in the strangest places, I've seen the Spirit. I've seen it move in churches, don't get me wrong. Seldom, but I've seen Him. Where have you seen Him? I've went to a house before, back to Sticks. And I want you to know there's a boy coming and pulled up off his seat. And that's Jesus in his heart. He was barred up. Went right over here in Lower Creek, and there's a man in there that taught me how to sing. He's the best thing that ever happened to me. He was supposed to have been dead three or four weeks or a month prior to that. And he leaned back there, and I said, Brother Robert, I come to sing with you. He had slash singing. He about couldn't make a voice. And he went, You've been my life for so long. You were right. And big old grin, not a tooth in his head. <laughs> well, that don't sound like nothing. Boy, it was a pine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what? You got to be out there to find them pines. Did you know that? Amen, you do. I've seen people that's so gifted. Jeff Hall one time at his house and, and I said we'll have to drive the Zuki he said why? I said it's rough in there we went back in there and got to praise of the Lord just having the best time he said let's pray for it he went down he had his suit on and here come this big old hound dog he always got me so I grabbed him he got me again right in the middle right in the street really. that not bother you? I don't live there they do it bothered me a bit in the world Jeff just kept a praying Whenever 
maybe out there. You want to know when you have a spiritual time in a local church? When you're out there. Where have you come back in? Two or more together. I am among you. Woo! Glory! Get to talking about that and receiving Jesus. And that knows about man. I've been there right on the borderline. Oh my goodness, they're, they're going to get saved. Just let me get down to that altar and pray for them. I know God's going to say, I know things are going to change. Why? But I believe it. I believe God's going to move. He moved on me and he can move on them. Oh, how I miss that praying and that serving God, knowing how they're saved and knowing how he died for them, how he rose for them, and how the Father looks at you. Woo, what a blessing to be part of the army of God. I went up there to Foley Center Sunday, and I want you to know them people, they couldn't hardly any of them move much. One of them had two spoons. of God by faith. An operation. Think about an operation working right. True religion is the operation of God and God alone. It is created by the energy, power, and working of God. Let's look at our text. 12b. Let's just read the whole verse. Buried with him in baptism. Dead. Wherein also ye are risen with him the resurrection, through the faith of the operation of God who has raised him from the dead. This is God's operation. It ain't man's operation. It ain't my operation. It ain't your operation. But may I submit to you, whenever you're in God's operation, he takes care of it because he operates everything out for his glory. And it's for your good too. All things work together for good. Those love God called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. Hallelujah. Blessed is the man who don't seek his counsel without God, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and he doeth meditate on it on both day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, bringing forth its fruit in its season. Rivers of pardon, rivers of mercy, rivers of restoration, rivers of love. Woo! Glory. Hate it. Good. Father, I come to you right now. Some of us I know have. Father, please.
word in the hearts of these dear people. Help us to be strong in you. Help us to know why we're here. Help us to stay faithful to that. And Lord, I pray for the lost. Help them to respond wherever they may be. If they're on the parking lot, on the Facebook, YouTube, help them to realize this is God's word, not Raymond's. That's it all. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Won't you come? This altar's open to you. Maybe you'd like to just sit down and pray for your family, your loved ones. That's just between you and God. Raymond, we done had an altar call. Well, I don't think you'll wear it out. Whatever you need to do. What does it take? One soul at a time. Amen. Twelve of them stirred the whole world up, and we're still talking about it. And one of them was a devil. You ever think about that? Yep. He worked directly for Satan. But he could have been saved. Why, Brother Ray? Because he, when he betrayed Jesus. Jesus looked at him, knowing what he'd done. This is my Lord. He said, friend, friend, where comest thou? That's my Jesus. No matter what I've done, no matter what I'm going to do, no matter what you've done, friend, where you coming from? If old Judas would have said, I'm, I, I, I need you, God. I failed you. He'd have forgiven you. He sure would. It's like Dusty said, he come through Judas come in there with all that money, went by every place to repent. Went right straight in there to the holy place, throwed that money down, repented to himself, not to God. I'm afraid there's a lot of that that goes on. Won't you come? Give you just a few more seconds to pray. Pray for your loved ones. Pray for your witness. Pray for our business meeting. We will be having one just immediately after I get through praying. Father, I thank you for this time together. I thank you for all the many blessings. I ask that you bless this, your congregation. They're so faithful. Lord, help me to continue to encourage them to stay that way. Help them to serve you. Help them to take serious what you did for them at the cross and what you've done for them at the resurrection. Give them life. So, Father, you bless our business meeting. Bless that offering for the prison. And Lord, touch them in a mighty way. And Lord, help me to keep on preaching and doing my best to repent of my sins. And I'm going to see you someday. And Lord, I love you. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, I do pray. I love every one of you. But if you'd like to leave, you're more than welcome to. We're going to be having a business meeting. It shouldn't be lengthy at all. It's just whatever you want to do. So you, if you want to leave, you can. I love you. If you want to stay, you can. Whatever you'd like to do. Remember the prayer with this box back there? Thank you, my friend. Whew. I love you guys very much. Okay. We'll, we'll start off with this. I don't know if anybody else noticed or not with the financial thing. Well, consider... At this time, I have a motion to consider some conference. Motion. I, hear a mo I have a second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Every one of you. Praise the Lord. You're a good group to preach to. I'll tell you that. I love you. But if you will look, if I could.